Hello, my name is Kamen Nikolov and I'm R&D Manager at VMware for PowerCI. Uh, today I, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the new uh, PowerCI NSX SDK module that we just released in, in PowerCI 12.6. I'm going to show you how to use that module uh, to create gateway firewall rules in uh, in VMC. Uh, so first, let let me get started with uh, by showing you the the entire concept uh, between uh, behind these these SDK modules. We currently have such SDK modules uh, for vSphere uh, REST automation API, and we also have the one for uh, for the NSX uh, policy API. Uh, the idea behind the behind these um, these modules is that they allow you to easily uh, to easily invoke API operations uh, through PowerShell. So uh, this uh, what is the concept there? So for every API operation, uh, we have one invoke commandlet. For example, if the API operation is create VM, we have invoke create VM. Uh, which actually executes the API operation. Uh, and for, for API operations that have some, uh, some complex input objects that you need to pass to them, uh, we also have those initialize commandlets, uh, which are named after initialize and the name of the API data structure. Uh, which help you build the input for for the API operations. So in the case of uh, invoke create VM, um, you have to create the um, uh, the, cre the create spec object, which you pass as an input of the API operation, and you use the initialize VM create spec uh, commandlet to do that. Uh, now let me tell you a little bit more about the uh, the NSX module more specifically. Uh, you can you can find uh, very very useful information about it in in this blog post uh, on the NSX uh, blog, um, which specifically goes through the through this new NSX module that we introduced in uh, in PowerCI 12.6, and it also shows you how how to do um, certain use cases using this module. Uh, it is a single module that uh, that you can use for both NSX on-prem and NSX on VMC. Uh, it has uh, different connect commandlets uh, for both, but uh, the rest the rest of the commandlets uh, you can you can just reuse the same the same commandlets for uh, for VMC and for on-prem. Um, so now let me uh, let me show you a little bit about our test environment today. Uh, we have an SDDC uh, in, in VMC, which is called PowerCLI Demo. And uh, currently, if we try to open the, the vSphere client uh, for, for this SDDC, uh, we won't be able to do that uh, because uh, there is no network connectivity uh, from, from my machine uh, to the SDDC. So this is, this is what we're going to change today uh, using, using PowerCLI, of course. Uh, we're going to create a new gateway firewall rule uh, that will allow um, network connectivity from, from my IP address uh, to our vCenter in the VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, to do that through the UI, uh, we would go to uh, Networking and Security tab, and uh, then we would pick our, uh, our gateway firewall, and we're going to select our management gateway, and uh, here we can see that we already have several several rules defined, uh, which, however, are just outbound rules. We don't have an inbound rule, uh, so the default deny all rule uh, comes into effect in this case, and uh, this is what blocks our our network connectivity. Uh, so here we're going to add uh, a new rule that will allow uh, our IP address uh, to to the vCenter. Uh, so now let's switch to Visual Studio Code and uh, to our PowerCLI script. Uh, to do that, the first thing that, uh, that we need to do is uh, to connect to our NSX server in the cloud. Uh, to do that, we first connect, uh, connect to VMC uh, using, using our API token. Uh, then to connect to the uh, NSX server in VMC, we need, uh, we need to pass it an access token. 
we need to pass it an organization ID and SDDC ID. Uh, so uh, to get the access token, uh, we use uh, VMC server get access token. Um, then we use get VMC organization to retrieve the organization. And we use get VMC SDDC to retrieve the SDDC. Uh, and now we're ready to call uh, connect uh, NSX VMC server, which will actually connect us to our VMC server on cloud. Okay, now, now we're connected and uh, now we want to create the NSX firewall rule. Um, so uh, to do that, we first need to check the API documentation and find the API method and the corresponding command that, that we need to call to do that. Um, there are two flavors of uh, the NSX uh, policy API documentation. Uh, one is for VMC. Uh, it is hosted on developer.vmware.com. And the other one is for on-prem. And there are certain uh, certain differences in uh, in the way we're working with, uh, with these two uh, API documentations. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit more uh, more about about both of them. Uh, so first of all, let's start with uh, with the VMC uh, documentation. So here uh, we can easily just search for uh, create gateway firewall rule, and uh, now we can see that uh, here we have an operation which is create or replace uh, gateway policy rule. So if we select this uh, this operation, uh, we can see what is um, what is the HTTP method. In this case, it is put. We can see the uh, the URL of uh, of the operation. Uh, we can see the different the different parameters that we have to pass it as path parameters and request body, uh, and and so on. Uh, but if we scroll down, we actually see the PowerCLI client SDK example, and uh, we can see that in this case, the PowerCLI commandlet that uh, that we need to invoke is invoke create or replace gateway rule. So this is this is our commandlet. Um, if we are doing the same thing for uh, for NSX on-prem, uh, what we have to do is uh, we have to find the API operation in um, in uh, the NSX documentation. Um, in this case, uh, we have to go to security, north-south security, gateway firewall rules, and find the update gateway rule operation. So this is this is the operation that we need. Uh, in this case, however, we don't have the PowerCLI example. So we are in this case we're, we'll be using get NSX operation commandlet uh, to find the operation that we need, and um, this get NSX operation commandlet, it accepts the uh, the method. In our case, we said that this is this is put method, and it also accepts the path of the operation. So we just copy and paste the path of the operation from from the API documentation. And we see that the operation that we have to invoke is um, invoke create or replace gateway rule. So we now know uh, the operation that uh, that we have to invoke uh, to to create an API rule. Uh, and uh, now we can use get help. to see what parameters we need to pass to this operation. And uh, here uh, we'll see that um, this, uh, this operation accepts the domain ID, the gateway policy ID, uh, the rule ID of the rule that we want to create, and uh, one rule object that actually this, uh, describes the rule that we want to create. And uh, as I told you before, when we have such complex objects that uh, that we need to, to initialize and pass to the API operation, we use the initialize commandlets. And in this case, we have this initialize rule commandlet. 
And uh, with this initialize rule, we're going to fill all the information that we need for, for our uh, firewall rule. Uh, first, we'll, we'll fill the sequence number, uh, which describes um, uh, which describes the priority of the rule in the list of all rules. Uh, we are also going to uh, to describe uh, the source and the destination. Uh, in our case, the destination will be a predefined group called vCenter, so that uh, it shows that the destination is our is our vCenter uh, in the VMC. Uh, SDDC and uh, the source group uh, in this case uh, is going to be uh, our our IP address. Um, then we're going to pass the display name, uh, the services that we want to to enable. In our case, uh, HTTPS and, and SSO, and the action that we want to uh, to uh, our firewall rule to do. In our case, we want to allow this IP address uh, to the destination. Uh, and for scope, we're going to pass uh, the management gateway. Um, OK, so now let's let's go and uh, fill all these uh, all these parameters that we want uh, that we need to pass uh, to our firewall rule. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to take our uh, our destination group. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're going to um, to call the command that, that lists all groups uh, for for the management gateway domain. Uh, and um, here it will return all the different uh, all the different groups uh, that the, the predefined groups that uh, that we have there. And we're going to filter that. Uh, to just uh, get the rule that is called uh, the the group that is called vCenter. Uh, so this is going to be our destination group. Uh, for our source group, uh, we will have to create a new a new custom group, uh, which is going to be an IP group. Uh, so to create a group, uh, we're going to use um, invoke update group for domain. We're going to pass the domain ID. Uh, we're going to pass the ID of the group that we want to create. Uh, in our case, we're going to call it uh, my IP group. And uh, we're going to pass the, the group object. And to get this group object, we're going to use again an initialize command that, and it will be initialize group. Uh, to this initialize group command that, we're going to pass uh, the description and the display name of the group. And we're going to pass an expression. So uh, this expression might be uh, might be different. There are different different kinds of expressions uh, that uh, that we can use to um, uh, in our in our custom groups. Uh, you can uh, you can see more information about uh, about these kinds of um, of expressions uh, here on this chart in the blog post that I told you about. Uh, so it could be an IP address expression if you want to allow an IP address in. Um, and it could be a MAC address expression if you want to create a firewall rule for for a MAC address. Uh, it could be a different. Uh, there are may, might be different kinds of conditions that uh, that we can define. Um, uh, so so yeah, this this expression um, might have um, might have different uh, different types of expressions. So in our case, we want to create an IP address expression. Uh, so it will be so we're going to use initialize IP address expression. Uh, we're going to pass the resource type and the list of IP addresses. In our case, this is just going to be uh, my my own IP address. Uh, so now let's go and uh, create uh, create this group. Okay, and now if we go back to the user interface and we go to uh, groups and we select uh, the management groups, we can see that now we have a new a new group which is called my IP group. And this uh, we're going to use this group uh, for uh, for the gateway firewall rule. Okay, uh, now let's uh, let's select the services that we want to enable. Uh, we're going to use invoke list services for tenant uh, command that will return a list of all the services 
uh, that uh, that we might allow through uh, through the gateway firewall rule. And uh, for out of them, we're going to filter just the HTTPS and the SSO service because these are the services that we want to allow. Uh, and last, uh, we have to fill the scope parameter, and uh, this uh, scope for this scope parameter, uh, we're going to list all the all the tier one gateways, and we're going uh, then we're going to filter uh, to just the management gateway. If we want to create a compute gateway rules, so we have to change um, MGW for management gateway with CGW for, for compute gateway uh, through this entire script. Uh, so now we're ready and uh, we, can, uh, we can go and uh, initialize all the properties uh, of our rule that we want to create. And at the end, we're going to call uh, invoke create or replace gateway rule uh, to actually uh, create the gateway rule. And now if we go uh, back to the UI and we go to the management gateway, uh, we're going to see that now we have we have a new role which is called my IP to vCenter inbound. And uh, now if uh, if we go back to our SDDC and we, uh, if we go and click open vCenter again, uh, we're going to see that now our vSphere client opens because uh, we have allowed the network connectivity uh, uh, from my IP address uh, to the vCenter. Uh, yep, so this is, uh, this is what I wanted to show you today. Remember, you can, you can use the same, uh, the same workflow and apply that to NSX on-prem as well uh, with, uh, with some minor differences. Obviously, the, connect, um, the connection will be different. Uh, you won't use connect VMC server and connect NSX VMC server, but just connect NSX server, uh, where we're going to pass the address and the username and the password of your NSX server. Uh, and um, from from there on, it is uh, it is pretty much the same thing. Thank you, and I hope this this video was useful.